The most satisfying way, for me at least, to run a macro automation task is by clicking a button. In this lesson, we will check out exactly how to do that. Our objective will be to make the macro available somewhere in the Excel interface so that the user, that is the non-VBA developer, can run the macro conveniently. For this lesson, you'll need to have the developer tab enabled in Excel. Let's quickly record a macro. Click on cell B2. Come to the developer tab. Click on record macro. Give it a name. Click OK. I will type my name into the current cell. Press Ctrl Enter and stop the recording. Let's run this macro in the traditional way. So say I want to populate my name in cell D3. We'll click on the cell, go to the developer tab, click on macros and with the macro name selected, click on run and the name gets populated into the active cell. OK, let's assign this macro to run on the click of a button. Our goal will be to add a button to our spreadsheet and assign the add name macro to it. And why add a button? Well, we can't expect the end user to select the macro name and run the macro from the developer tab. The end user doesn't even need to know the name of the macro. The ultimate automation is for an end user to perform a task by clicking on something, just like they would click any of the buttons on the Excel tab. As a VBA developer, we should make the macro as accessible to the user as possible. And hence a button is a great way to present our macro. Let's come back to the developer tab. In the controls group, click on the insert button. We have two sections here, form controls and ActiveX controls. Both have similar set of controls. Unless you want to heavily customize your control, I would suggest going with the form controls option. Let's click on button, click once, drag your cursor down onto the spreadsheet. You will notice that the cursor has turned into a plus symbol. Left click down. And with your finger pressed down, drag the cursor away to create a rectangle. Don't worry about getting the size right. We can always change it later. And release your finger. The assign macro dialog box will appear. Select the macro name that you want to assign to this button and click on OK. But I won't do that now. Let's cancel out of this dialog box. I want to show you how to get to this dialog box again in case you have missed something in this step or you may have decided to assign another macro to this button later on. So let's cancel. You can see the button has appeared here. Let's right click on the button, come down to assign macro and we get the assign macro dialog box again. This time we will select our macro and click on OK. Before testing it out, let's make some alterations. The button is displaying a default caption or name button one. Let's change it to add name, right click on the button, edit text, delete the existing name and add a new name. Click outside. Looks like we need to resize our button for the full name to appear. So let's do that. Right click on the button once. Left click outside to get rid of this menu. And hover your cursor over the right corner. When you see a two way arrow, left click down and drag it in any direction to reshape the size you're happy with and then release the mouse. We can move the button to a different location as well. Again, right click once, left click out. Hover your mouse over the button until you see the four arrow icon, left click down and drag and drop the button to the new location. As a tip, if you're working with a form control, you may want to first fix the shape and design of the button before assigning the macro because you may accidentally trigger the macro. If you're using an ActiveX button, we would be able to safely work in the design mode and wouldn't face this issue. Okay, let's test this button. I'll clear out my previous names. Select any cell where you want to display the name. Make sure you're not in edit mode. That is, you don't see the white dots along the border. Click once on the button and the name gets populated. Great. We can do some more customizations for this button. So let's right click on the button. Come down to format control. In the font tab, we can change the font and the point size. And you can explore the rest of these options. But I will note two important ones. Let's click cancel. Now our button has been placed over at least one cell. If we try to resize the underlying column or row, the button may resize as well. So for example, let me increase the height of row 6 and the button resizes as well. This is the default behavior, but there are times when you want the button size to remain fixed regardless of changes to the column or row size. So let's undo the change and we'll modify a setting. So let's right click, format control, go to the properties tab. The default is move and size with cells. 
The next option is move but don't size with cells. This option won't change the size of the button, but it may change the position if the underlying row or column is resized. So let's select this option, click OK. Let's change the height of row 6. Nothing happens. But let's move the edge of column E slightly to the left and see what happens. And the button moves as well. So if you don't want that, what we can do is go to Format Control and choose the last option that is Don't Move or Size with Cells. And another important option is on the Protection tab. By default, this locked option is checked. Suppose you want to lock the full worksheet, but you still want to be able to click on a button and trigger the macro. In that case, you will need to uncheck the locked option. So uncheck, click OK, and then you could proceed to protect the worksheet. So let's give it a password. This sheet is locked. I can't double click to it, but we can click on the button if we want. But we can't run this particular macro on a lock sheet because the moment I click on the button, we get an error because though we can click on the button, we can't actually modify any cell value because the sheet itself is locked. So this particular macro won't work, but you could have other scenarios where suppose you're building a form and you want to restrict user access only to certain editable areas, then this trick of unlocking buttons would really come in handy. So I'm just going to click end and unprotect the sheet. Okay, that was how to add a macro to a form control button. For most purposes, a form control button should be good enough to do the job. But if you want more customizations, then you may need to opt for a ActiveX option. One basic example is that you cannot change the color of this form control button, but you can change it for an ActiveX button. And a more complex use case for ActiveX would be to trigger the macro on double click rather than a single click or even disable the button unless some condition on the worksheet is met. Similar to running a macro on the click of a form control button, we could assign it to a button in the quick access toolbar as well. This is a quick access toolbar. To add a macro to it, come down and right click on any tab in the Excel ribbon. Go to customize the ribbon, click on the quick access toolbar menu item. In the choose commands from drop down, choose macros and in the window below, select the macro that you want to add and then click add to move it to the adjacent window. It has been allocated a default icon. We can even change the icon by clicking on modify and choosing from this selection. So I'm going to choose a different icon, click OK and click OK again. And we can see the button has been added to the quick access toolbar. So let's select cell C2 and click on the button in the quick access toolbar and the name gets populated. There is one point to note here. The quick access toolbar is at the Excel application level. That is, you will see it each time you open a new instance of Excel. But the macro that we have just assigned to it is a local macro that only exists within our current Excel file. So if you open a new Excel file and try to run this macro from the quick access toolbar, you will get an error. One solution around this would be to add your macro to the personal workbook and then assign that macro to the quick access toolbar. And then you would be able to run the macro from any file on your computer. We will cover personal workbooks in our lesson on saving macro files in chapter one. And finally, we could assign a macro to an icon, shape or picture. So let's go to insert and we can choose what type of image we want to insert. Let's insert a rounded rectangle. Come down to our sheet, make a button like a rectangle. And let's format the shape a bit to give it the appearance of a button. Right click on the shape, go to format shape. In the effects option, let's come down to 3D format and add some top bevel, six and six, and some bottom bevel as well. I think that should do. Let's add some text as well. Click out and let's align this text. So let's go to text options and format shape and we'll change the alignment to mid-centered. I think that should be enough. Now let's assign the macro, right click, Assign macro, choose a macro name and click OK. Let's click outside, select any cell and then click once on the rectangle and the name appears. And similarly, we could add a macro to an icon or a picture. And that was all about making a macro accessible to the end user. In the next lesson, we will look at how to save a macro file 
adjust the security settings, and even lock the VBA project.